Okay. Are you ready for the coffee alternative taste test? All right. We're just going to see how well do these coffee substitutes measure up to the real thing. And a quick side note, we are actually videoing this part of the podcast, so it will be on YouTube. If you want to see what Bill's subtle reactions are, right, you can tell a lot from someone's face. You might want to check out this part of the podcast on YouTube as well, because there will be a video there where we can kind of analyze Bill and see what he's really thinking through this taste test. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about how this is going to go. Bill is going to taste four different coffee substitutes. He might try them. I know that he has some coconut milk and some raw honey, right, Bill? Correct. Yeah, he has some of those just in case he feels like it needs a little bit of something to add to it. So he might add that. Then he's going to rate the coffees, the coffee substitutes on four scales. And those scales are taste, versatility. So versatility means um, how would, easy would it be to drink it hot or cold? Or what if I put something in it, like a flavoring or a non-dairy milk or a honey, whatever, things like that. Like how versatile is it? And then he'll also be judging it on ease of use. How easy was it to make it, right? Did it take 30 minutes to make it or was it a quick one minute make? And then the last thing he'll be judging it on, and I will be talking about this part of it, of it, the health benefits, the health benefit of our coffee alternative. We're going to judge. So that's four. And we'll judge each of these on a scale of one to five. So the highest any of these coffee substitutes could get would be 20. And the lowest, of course, would be zero. So at the end, we will put them in rank order and you'll know what did the taste test reveal and you'll know which ones you want to go out and buy right away. Does that sound good, Bill? Sounds great. Let's get started. Okay, let's go for it. So our first one is Ticino. So I'll let you get that one ready. Bill has them. All right. If you're in, if you're watching in video, you can see he has them behind him. He's going to pull his little tea tray around with his various cups on it and get it ready. Very exciting. The first one is Ticino. I know. I'm excited for you. So Ticino, it's not the name of a coffee. It's the name of a company. And they are an alternative to coffee company. And they have many, many many flavors in their arsenal. So they have um, options like traditional ones, like the dark roast or French roast, but they also have ones that are a little bit more interesting sounding like maca chocolate and even some crazy flavors like mango lemon balm and pumpkin spice. So personally, I just want to add a little side note here that I always prefer when I'm doing anything like this, I prefer to go with the plain flavor just because those added flavors, um, those added spices that might be in a product like this, they tend to be difficult for our digestive system to process. And then it might give us a little bit of stomach upset, some bloating, gas, sometimes some diarrhea. So just be really careful, be cognizant of those kinds of things. I would personally, when it comes to Ticino, I would choose the French roast or the dark roast, and then add in your cinnamon, your nutmeg, your vanilla, add in those things at home, choose the flavorings only if you know that you tolerate them. So that's my little bit of advice. Ticino, they have a few different blends that they use to make their coffee substitute varieties. They use dandelion root in some of their blends. They use mushroom blends and Bill will be trying some of those coffees in a little while, but this particular one he's going to try, he's trying, I believe Bill, correct me if I'm wrong. It's at the dark roast. Dark roast. Yeah. So this one is made with chicory, chicory root. This one's made with chicory root and chicory root. It's actually the plant is a really pretty flower. It's got a, a really pretty plant. It has a flower on it that is a periwinkle color, which is really pretty. But what we're talking about here, what they're roasting to make this coffee taste, coffee flavor, it's actually the root of the um, of the chicory root. So that's what we're talking about. And most people say we'll see what Bill has to say about this. But most people say. It's a, it's a lot like coffee, a little bit woody, a little bit nutty tasting. So I'm curious to see what Bill's going to think about this. Bill, are you ready to taste your dark roast Ticino? Yeah, I'm ready about five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my dear, go for it. 
All right. Well, I'll start with saying that what I like about the Chino is that it comes um, in like a tea bag almost. And so that you can almost steep it just like you would tea. So that makes it super easy. I'm starting with the ease of use. It made it super easy. Just boil the water um, and, and put it in there like a tea bag. And when it gets to the strength you want, you just you know pull the tea bag uh, the coffee bag, the not coffee coffee bag out of the of the water, and you're ready to go. The other thing that I found about uh, Ticino, and and you can tell me if this may be the case for a lot of these, but um, what's really important about the chicory root part, I think, and about Ticino in particular, is that it's um, very non-acidic, and it contains a prebiotic called inulin. And maybe you can tell me some more about that. But inulin is a soluble fiber from the chicory root that is really supposed to be supportive of um, uh, gut flora. So I found that. So that's a kind of a benefit that I found. But more importantly, let me see what it tastes like. Okay. So Bill is tasting the Ticino. And what's the verdict? I like this one a lot. It probably, to me, it's very, very similar to coffee. It has a little bit of a woody taste to it. And it's, um, as you mentioned, and it, it's really tastes the most like coffee to me. But what I noticed is a bit of a difference. Like coffee, like coffee has a, a body to it, like almost like a texture in a way. And, and tea has kind of a different body or a different texture. It's more of a I don't want to say watery, I guess, but it, it has a different kind of body or texture to it. So this is maybe a little bit more like tea as far as the body or texture goes, but the taste is just like coffee to me. That's awesome. Okay. So we went through taste. How would you rate it? Well, actually let's go ahead and give it a rating on taste one to five. What would you give it? Now I'm going to write it down. So we remember. It's early and it's early in the ratings, but I'm going to go ahead and say taste as compared to coffee and just taste overall. I would call this one the five for taste. Woohoo! High praise. Yeah, going straight to the top. I love it. Versatility. So would it be easy to make hot or cold? Could you, you know, add some things to it? Would it help the flavor? How versatile is it? You know, you, you had mentioned kind of adding stuff into it. That's what we call doctoring it up. So, (laughs) so um, yeah, this one would be, you could easily doctor it up with the same things that you like in your coffee, whether you like, you know, sugar or creamer or however you want to doctor your coffee, you could do the same thing um, with, with, um, with the Ticino and it's actually gotten a little bit uh, cool now. So it was great when it was hot. I'm not a big fan of iced coffee, but it's cooled down now and it, maintained its taste especially because i've left the bag in for a while so if you like iced coffee i think this one would be a great one to steep for a long time and then you could add ice to it and make it into a great iced coffee for the summer nice is that a five i'm feeling from you what would you give it on i think again again compared to like if you're looking for like a coffee substitute for sure i think that one versatility wise you could do pretty much anything to it so yeah i would give it a five Okay. How about ease of use? I mean, tea bag. It's like a tea bag, right? I mean, how easy does it get? I know. I'm going to say the same thing. I mean, I, I'm giving myself almost no wiggle room, but <laughs> I would say that, yeah, I would say this is probably of the ones we made. They're all going to be high on ease of use for sure. Yeah. Um, but but I think the tea bag um, is, is a nice touch and makes it a little bit easier. So I would definitely say five. Okay. So, so far we have five, five, five. I'm going to talk a little bit about the health benefits and that we'll see if it gets a five or not. So Bill, you mentioned chicory is the main component in this particular Ticino blend. Chicory is awesome for inflammation, for decreasing your blood sugar. It improves digestion and all because of that inulin, but because of that, it makes it a high FODMAP. So FODMAP is that you're going to get ready for some big words here, fermentable oligosaccharides, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides, those, um, those carbohydrate components, those FODMAPs. And so because of that, it can be tricky for people with, that are in a flare, people who have active disease research shows that when we are in those active states, the prebiotic 
fibers, they're probably not the best for us. We need to wait until our digestive system symptoms calm down a little bit. So that's what I would say health-wise that it really is best to wait until you're in remission or things are calmed down. Otherwise you might get a little bit of stomach upset from the inulin in the chicory. Also, if you're on the specific carbohydrate diet, this would not be SCD legal. So again, wait until some healing has taken place and then you can go for it. But like I said, if you're not in a flare up, this is a great choice. Now, if you really like the idea of Ticino, if you like what Bill is saying about the flavor, the very coffee flavor of it, remember I mentioned that Ticino has different varieties. You might want to try one of the mushroom blends because that does not have the chicory in it. So not all of the blends of Ticino have the same profile. So you'll want to look for that when you're deciding if this is a good option for you. So in terms of health, because you have to wait until, you know, some gut healing has taken place, that kind of lowers me a little bit on it. So if I were to talk about the health benefits and give it a rating, I'd give that a three. So all in all, really good. So we're looking at a 17 rating. Did I get my math is so bad. So I'm going to have Bill look and make sure I have that right. Is that right? That got a 17? It didn't 18, right? You said three, right? Three. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's 18. Let's that's go with that. 18 okay. for that one. <laughs> so 18, we gave it an 18. Yeah, that's right. Because it lost two points. Perfect. Okay. So 18, are you ready for the next one? Yeah. We're going to move on to our hot roasted cacao, our hot brewed roasted cacao. That's a mouthful there. We're going to move on to that one as our next coffee alternative for Bill to try it has heart, big shoes to fill, right? Our Ticino got an 18. So let's see. Okay. So here's what I did with this. I took raw cacao beans that I bought at the health food store. And then I roasted them through a roasting process. I found online on YouTube. And basically in case you want to do this yourself, I started the oven at 300 for five minutes, moved it down to 275 for 15 minutes. No, I'm sorry, 10 minutes and then 265. If your oven can do that, 265 for 15 minutes for the rest of it. it, took 30 minutes. And so you just roast it. I mean, really easy. You do have to turn the oven temperature down. And then I took them out of the oven. I put them in a bag and I took a rolling pin and I rolled it to get the cacao nibs out of the shell. But interestingly, the recipe that we followed to make these, you would think you'd remove the shell, but actually it had us leave the shell in. So they were just broken up and Bill can tell you why, why did we leave the shell in for this one? Yeah, this is something that's getting a lot more kind of press these days. Um, as a, as a caffeine alternative or a coffee alternative, I should say. Um, and we left the, the husks in because it gives a little bit more flavor and it adds some color. Otherwise it wouldn't be, uh, as, uh, as dark. As color. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So what we did is then boiling water and then we let it steep for five minutes. So that's that one. Let's see what Bill thinks. Yeah. And we let it steep, um, in a little basket in the water. And so it was, uh, it's been steeping for a while. And the other thing while I'm getting ready to taste it, I'll mention is that I slipped up when I said that this is a caffeine replacement and not a coffee replacement. It, 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 it would be a coffee replacement because it's cacao, which has uh, methyl xanthines. And, and so essentially it's caffeine. So it's not caffeine free. Right. So Bill is giving it a taste mm. in his dainty little tea mug. My little tea <laughs> mug. With my... So <laughs> what I like about this one, it, so it definitely has a chocolate flavor, mm -hmm. but it's not like hot chocolate, right? So it, it's interesting. It's not like coffee. It's, it's a, in a lot of ways, it's more like a tea as far as it's like body and it's consistency. So, it, and it looks kind of more like a, a tea, um, but it doesn't taste, it, it, it doesn't taste like coffee. It doesn't taste like, I'd say it tastes like a chocolate tea is kind of the way I would describe it. It's not bitter at all. I thought it would be bitter because of the, the, um, the cacao nibs, but it, it's not really that bitter at all. Um, so I, I would say this one is one to enjoy for what it is, not for what it's not, right? So it, it's, mm. you're not going to enjoy it as a coffee. You're going to enjoy it as a chocolate tea. I think that would be the way I would describe yeah. it. Really, really good. Okay. So what would you give it for taste? For taste, I think I would go 
you know, if I was, I think I would go with a five. Really that good. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Versatility. Versatility wise, again, probably I wouldn't enjoy it as much cold as yeah. hot. Um, you know, again, you can do cold teas, but this is kind of, a this kind of just kind of begs to be more hot. Um, again, not bitter. So you don't have to doctor it up, but it's the kind of thing that you could doctor up a little bit. So this would be great with a little bit of, and maybe even make it taste, give it a little bit more body and, um, would be to mix it with some coconut milk or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. something to, and, and then it might taste even more like a uh, hot chocolate or at least have creamy, some more of that. Yeah. More right? creamy taste to it. So yeah. that might be an idea. So that's a good thing, but versatility wise, it means, um, you could doctor it up, but maybe not as good cold. So maybe I'll go with a four. Okay. And ease of use. Was that easy to make? I would have to say, so if you could get roasted cacao nibs directly yeah. and start with that, you might lose a little bit of the flavor. You might lose a little bit of the color, but you would definitely ratchet up the ease because the process you went through to roast them and, and kind of that, it's like, if you want a quick cup of coffee replacement in the morning, you don't want to roast coffee be um, beans for, you know, half an hour. Right. So I would, um, I would call that a three. Okay. And then I'm going to talk for the a way bit we about, did it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. The way that we did it, but it could be easier, but well, you know, we have to go with the way that we did it, right? With our ratings, right. but it was fun. I don't know. I, I enjoyed buying the beans and then roasting them. That was fun. And it made the house smell really chocolatey, which is a bonus in my opinion. Okay. So let's talk about some health benefits here. Like you said, Bill, this is not caffeine free. It contains about half of the caffeine of a brewed coffee. So I would say this is great if you're trying, you know, if you find that you are, um, feeling like you need caffeine in your life and you want to lower that, this is a great option because it still has the caffeine. So if you're just kind of stepping down from coffee, I love this as a substitute and cacao itself. It also contains 10 times more theobromine than coffee. Theobromine, it's a, um, it's a compound that's in cacao and it helps with alertness with fewer side effects. So it gives you that kind of, you know, that alertness and energy fix that coffee would, but it has fewer side effects than the caffeine. So that's pretty cool. And the good news about cacao though, also is that it contains polyphenols and those polyphenols are wonderful for, because they're anti-inflammatory. And that's what we're trying to do here with Crohn's and colitis to reduce that inflammation. So all in all, I just think it's wonderful. One little caveat note is that there are some diets that it's not allowed on. Cacao is not allowed on the specific carbohydrate diet. So if you're on that diet, it might not be something that you could use. So for, because of that, I think I would give it a four in terms of my health rating. So let's add this up. And this time I'm going to let Bill add it up. We've got a five, a four, a three and a four. And that would give us for our hot brewed roasted cacao. That would give us a 16, 16. Okay. So right now our leader is the Ticino, but close second is the roasted cacao, the hot brewed cacao. All right, let's move on to the um, third one in our list. Bill, did I give the list of the four ones that we were trying in the beginning? Did I tell everybody the list of the four? I'm sorry if I didn't, I'm, just in case I didn't, I'm going to give it one more time. The four that Bill is taste testing are Ticino is number one, the hot brewed roasted cacao is number two Four stigmatic is number three. And that is a mushroom. Ah, that's a mushroom blend. And then the number four is the, um, what's number four. Oh, the dandelion root tea. I, you know what? I don't think I did tell everybody you should know what we're looking at. So number four is the dandelion root tea. And I would say that's probably the least like coffee, but also another good alternative. So we've made it to number three. Number three is for stigmatic. And like I said, it's a mushroom blend. So it, it's all about the mushroom with this company. They blend different kinds of mushrooms and ones that you've probably never heard of before. And it might sound kind of weird, but there's something about mushrooms when they're blended together that they do 
kind of tastes like coffee. So it'll be really interesting to see what Bill thinks. This particular one, this four stigmatic, it has nine different mushroom blend, nine different mushroom flavor compounds within the coffee alternative. Let me just tell you what a few, a few of them are. We've got Changa mushroom, reishi, cordyceps, lion mane, shiitake, mayatake, and yoki. And so it's just fun to say those. So <laughs> those are a few of them. And then it all just gets this little hint with it of rose hip. Rose hip is a really delightful flavor. It's the part of the rose that's just below the petals. And it, it's in a lot of herbal blends of tea. So it'll be interesting to see how does it complement this flavor? We'll see if Bill says, oh, I noticed hints of rose hip. <laughs> we'll see. All right, Bill, you ready to taste? I'm ready. All right, go for it. He's making mm. a face. He's tasting. He's saying, hmm. No, I'm kidding. That's for the, <laughs> rooper, that's for the blooper reel. Um, I'm not sure no, what that means. Tell us. No. Um, good. It's important, I think, to mention that obviously with all those ingredients, it's organic. Obviously, it's uh, vegan and it's gluten-free. Those are all great things. Um some people said it was bitter. I didn't find it bitter. I don't taste the rose hips. It's, it's, um, it is, it's darker. So it's, it's, it's a lot darker than the, um, cacao nibs. Um, so it's, it's, it looks more like coffee. Mm. It's earthy, um, maybe a little nutty and kind of a smooth taste. I don't think it's too, um, I don't think it's too bitter. I, I would say it doesn't taste like coffee, but, um, but kind of like the Ticino, it does have a bit of a, coffee-ish body to it in a way. Um, so it, I, I like it. So what are you going to give it for taste? For taste, I would give this one, the, I would probably give this one a four. A four. And okay. I think, I think mainly, I mean, they market themselves as a, as a coffee alternative. And um, I'd say probably the Ticino tastes more like coffee. So if you're going straight for that taste, but in all, all the other ways, it's really good. Awesome. Okay. Versatility. Um, this one was easy. It kind of um, came in as a powder. You just poured it in the hot water and stirred it up. Um, could you so do it hot or cold? Do you think? I, I think, I think you could same as I mentioned with Tatino, you could probably, it's a little cool now. So you could probably ice it up a little bit. You could certainly doctor it up um, a little bit and, and maybe even you could, you know, what you could do is maybe even, um, add a little bit of the cacao nib to it to Ooh, give it like a little yes. or maybe some other spices like cinnamon or something to give mm -hmm. it a, um, or, or even chicory like you know I grew up in the south we put chicory root in coffee which sounds weird but um, anyway so you know something like that might punch up the coffee-ish flavor a little bit more than it is yeah um, but yeah so versatility wise I would um, I would probably call that one a four okay and ease of use um, and same thing, like, um, it was like a I mentioned, powder, super it was a simple, powder. You, right? just, you just put it in the hot water and stir it up. And, and, uh, you, you, that way you can kind of moderate, you know, if you want more of it taste, you can put more in, uh, if you want less, you mm -hmm. put less in. So mm -hmm. I would definitely say that one's probably a five as far as the ease of use goes. Okay. And in terms of health, you just cannot get better health than mushrooms. It's, it's crazy how many health benefits, how varied the health benefits are of mushrooms. We're talking increased immune function, reducing stress and anxiety. They promote energy, healthy skin, blood sugar balance. And it's also full of antioxidants because of the rose hips that we have going on. It's high in vitamin C. So, because those road rose hips are high in vitamin C. So absolutely love that. You just cannot get better health in a coffee alternative. I got to give it a five. So we've got four, four, five. Where are we at, Bill? That's going to be 18. So four, four, to... five, five. Yeah. So yep, 18. 18. So it's a tie mm -hmm. with our Ticino. Okay. Last coffee alternative we're going to talk about today. This one is right up my alley. In fact, I drink it almost every day. It's dandelion root tea. So if dandelion, if you're thinking dandelions, like those ugly weeds that are in your front yard that, you know, with the yellow flower on them. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, but we're not eating the flower here. This is the root and it's roasted. And when you roast it, oh my goodness, I'm biased, but it's absolutely 
delicious. So we'll see what Bill thinks about this one. It's probably, like I said, the least like coffee from the ones that Bill is trying, but because it's roasted, right? That coffee roasted, they go together. It might just kind of remind you of coffee and be something that you can move over to from coffee. All right, Bill, what do you think? Well, I already snuck a, a, a sip and I found oh, it to awesome. be really good. It, it's, you can Now, let me ask you real quick. Do, have you had it before today? Have you ever had roasted dandelion root yes. tea? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I like it. And, and I, I would say that it's not a coffee substitute in the same way that the Four Sigmatic or the Ticino might be, because it is kind of more of a tea, but un, unlike um, maybe the cacao nib for in particular, it has a aroma more like coffee because it is roasted. Um, and so it has a nice roasted smell to it. It has a bit of a roasted taste as well. It's a little bit bitter. Um, and, but interestingly, I think the bitter taste is part of what is you're probably going to say is kind of a health benefit because I, I know it does kind of help to stimulate digestion and, and supports the right. detoxification process. So I think that bitterness is, you know, it's there, but it's not like overwhelming or anything like that. I think it would be something that would be really good. Like of the others, like, I don't think you'd want to add honey to something that's like right. a coffee, like the Ticino or the Four Sigmatic, right. this is one you could probably add some honey, or maybe if you like monk fruit, uh, monk fruit sweetener or something mm -hmm. like that, if you're allowed mm -hmm. to have that, that might be good with, with this one in particular. Um, so I, I think that's the case. And then um, it's, again, it's gotten a little bit cool. And unlike the uh, roasted cacao nibs, this one I think would be good cold either i almost like an iced tea or something like that you could probably do it that, that way um because of i often let of mine get cold and i think it tastes yeah. good yeah i think it's good okay so for taste did you give it a rating yet what was your rating i didn't give it a rating yet um and if we're rating it as like compared to coffee i would probably say a four and but versatil it does taste good. versatility versatility i'm going to give it a five because again hot cold you can add stuff to it. You can doctor mm -hmm. it up. And ease of use? Um, again, like a tea, comes with a tea bag. Couldn't get easier than that. Boil the water, put the tea bag in, leave it in as long as you want to get the taste you want. I'd give okay. it a five. Awesome. Okay. Let's talk about health. I am a huge fan of roasted dandelion root. It is just so healthy. Dandelion supports your liver. It supports your gallbladder. It supports your overall digestion. Like you said, Bill, it's considered a bitter. So those bitters, they really work to help and secrete the digestive enzymes in our body, which is really important for your digestive functioning. It helps your liver with detoxification. It helps with bile secretions as you are trying to digest your food. We need those bile secretions to help us have healthy digestion and absorption. So I, I absolutely love dandelion root for that. I also love that it's naturally caffeine free, right? It's not decaffeinated. It's naturally caffeine free. Like many of the ones that Bill tried today. One little caveat though, with dandelion root, it's not allowed on that super strict specific carbohydrate diet because it's a polysaccharide. So it's a little bit too complex for that. If you have a digestive tract with a lot of dysbiosis going on, things haven't calmed down. I do have to say that you may want to wait though, uh, but I, I drink it every day and um, I absolutely love it. I think the health benefits of dandelion root are amazing. So in terms of health, I'm going to give that one a four. So we've got four, five, five, four on the dandelion root. What does that mean? I'm going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. It equals 18. 18. Okay. I have to, oh my goodness. I, you know what, in all of these, we can do a little recap here. I thought that the brewed roasted cacao, I thought that one would be our leader, but it ended up being 16 while the Ticino, the roasted dandelion root and the four stigmatic ended up all in a three-way tie. Yeah. And the only thing I would say about that is we would probably have a four-way tie, except for the way we did the, um, the roasted cacao nib, um, that roasting process at home made it the ease of use. We scored it pretty low, but I think if you got cacao nibs and just went straight at it, then it would, that would probably put it right in the same ballpark with the others. Yeah. Not bad. Right. Not bad. Would you keep all of these in your house 
or is there one that you would want more than others in, you know, to keep at our house? I think all things considered, even though they got this you know, kind of the scores kind of varied a little bit for me, the Tachino, even though health benefits wise, it scored the lowest mm -hmm. um, taste versatility, ease of use wise, it scored the highest consistently. So I think probably that's the one I would turn to first for me. Yeah, I think they're all good options though, right? If you really are thinking about your caffeine consumption and you're thinking about the coffee you're drinking and you feel like it really is doing a number on your digestive system, isn't it good to know that there are alternatives out there? Yeah, I think that's great. And, you know, there's been periods of time throughout our history during, you know, war and things like that, where resources have been kind of limited, where people have turned to alternatives from coffee and have discovered things like mushrooms, the kind of the basis for the uh, four stigmata and dandelion root and roasted uh, cacao. So these are, all, these are all legit, tasty alternatives um, that I wouldn't hesitate to, to go to.